Hey guys, Annette here. I promised you I would try and make a canning video. Um, so here goes. I am making some chicken soup today for the uh, canner. I made stock back there last night. It's not strained yet. I'm going to strain it as I put it in the jars um, just to make it a little easier. And then whatever's left over I'll can up probably just as um, broth. There's eight ribs of celery diced up there. There are two medium onions. That's the uh, equivalent of a two pound bag of carrots uh, peeled and chopped. And there are about seven cloves of garlic there minced. And then this is all the chicken. I had a 10 pound bag of chicken hindquarters that I had gotten on sale. So that's what I cooked down to make the broth. I pulled all the chicken off of the bones I shredded up the chicken, put the bones back in the broth to simmer for just a little while. Um, that's been off for a little while, and I did skim off some of the fat off the top as much as I could kind of get. Um, it's kind of ideal to let it sit in the fridge overnight if you can, but I have to work a 12-hour shift tonight, so I do not have time to do that. So um, how I make my canned chicken soup is I don't put like all the ingredients into the broth and cook it and then like divide it up between the jars. I layer in the meat and the vegetables and then cover that with broth to an inch head space um, and then I wipe the rims, put the lids on and put it in the canner. Most of the time when I make my chicken soup I fill it up higher than halfway. If you fill it up higher than halfway you have to process for meat um, if you only fill it up halfway, there is a soup processing time. I like to fill my jars um, pretty close to the top because I almost always have um, pints of broth as well. So when I go to open the jar, um, I can use this as like the meat and vegetable base, open up another pint or quart of broth, add that, and then cook the noodles um, in that. So that's what I usually do. But if you literally wanted it, this one jar to be one meal, um, you could fill it up halfway with meat and vegetables all the way to one inch with broth and then process for the time of soup. And that's on the National Centers for Home Food Preservation website. Um, but mine are going to go in for 90 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure for my elevation because I fill them higher than halfway up. So um, we'll get started here in just a second. Okay guys, we'll see how uh, well I can do this one-handed. Another thing I wanted to let you know is that with pressure canning, um, well actually with both types of canning now, if you're processing longer than 10 minutes, you do not have to uh, sterilize your jars anymore. I usually still do with water bath canning just because it's a preference, um, but when I'm pressure canning, I definitely do not sterilize my jars. I just um, wash them with hot soapy water, make sure they're very clean, and uh, fill them up. And this will be warm-ish because the broth's still a little warm. So we'll start the counter off the canner, excuse me, off with probably like lukewarm-ish water and bring it up uh, to temperature pretty slowly. That keeps everything at the same temperature and keeps your jars from uh, not breaking. So I'm going to start with putting about a cup of the shredded meat in. Sorry, I'm trying to do this one-handed. I'm just going to put it right in my funnel and let it go down, maybe if I get a spoon, into the jar. Um, I don't mind using regular mouth jars with soup because even though there's chunks, they're pretty small and everything pours out of the jar pretty easily. Um, if I'm raw packing meat, I do not use regular mouth jars. I would use a... Uh, wide mouth jar for that, but doing uh, soup, everything comes out of the jar just fine using a regular mouth jar. I know some people use, kind of use like wide mouth jars for everything because they're easier to clean or whatever. Um, I like to get regular mouth ones pretty often uh, because um, usually the jars themselves actually can be a little bit cheaper, especially pints. Wide mouth pints tend to be cheaper, um, but then also the lids are cheaper. And um, I've started using the Made in the USA Walmart Mainstays brand lids, 
They don't pop the same as the ball ones, but they work really well. So, um, and they only make regular mouth ones. And those are only $1.32, I think, in my area. I think they're $1.32 in my area for 12 lids, which is a great price. So sometimes I do prefer using the regular mouth uh, lids and jars just for good cost savings. So I'm going to continue to fill these up with a cup of meat. See, those ones already have them in there. Uh, everything that I'm going to put in is pretty approximate when I go to the vegetables. I'll probably start with a half a cup and then divide it out evenly amongst the jars. So when I get to the veggies, I'll bring you guys back. All the jars have a cup of meat in them. There is a little bit of meat left over, so I'll either can that up tomorrow or um, maybe just save it in the fridge to make some soup this week for myself. Um, I'm gonna start with a half a cup. Sorry about all the noise of celery per jar and then if I want a little bit more I'll go ahead and add it really hard <laughs> to get half a cup in here there we go and I leave all of my vegetables raw um, these are going to go in the pressure canner for 90 minutes they're going to get plenty cooked. I don't feel like there's any reason to mix it all together and to um, divide it out that way. Um, that's, like I said, just a personal preference. And I don't know how the new ball books book does it. I don't have it in front of me. I know that the older one, when you make soup, it does say to like cook it all together. And I don't know, you boil it for five minutes or something. So everything's hot through and then you divide. Um, the ingredients amongst the jars. Um, I think the other reason why I don't like that is that I don't know if it would end up super even. Like one jar might have more celery and the other jar might have more carrots and so on and so forth. So I just like to do it this way because all the jars end up almost the same, which I like. So I'm going to finish putting these half cups of celery in here. And if there's any celery left over, um, I'll either set it to the side or I'll divide it amongst the jars. I only have one more jar that needs it, but there's not really that much there. So I may save it and see if I can make a couple more quarts later or I'll make, like I said, I'll make soup this week. Okay guys, now a half cup carrots per jar. I went ahead and did most of them off camera because it was really hard with one hand um, to hold the camera and get the half cup of uh, carrots in the half cup and get it in the jar. So that is number seven. So there are the carrots in there. And as you can see, they're already starting to get pretty full, uh, almost a little bit more than halfway right now. So um, that's why I do mine for the 90 minutes instead of the time for soup. I think I'm gonna do a quarter cup of onions and see how that goes. And then um, probably about a teaspoon or so of the chopped garlic. So onions are mostly in. I just have this one sort of heaping quarter cup left. That's what went in every jar. So we're gonna put that right in the last jar here. And like you can see, they are getting quite full. Um, I usually, they're not packed down or anything at all. So everything's really loose in there, which is good because you don't want anything to be too dense when you're canning it. Um, the only thing left to add is some garlic to each jar. I think I'm just going to kind of eyeball it with a teaspoon here. Here's my garlic that I chopped up. And I'm just going to do a little bit in each jar. When I made the stock, it had uh, car carrots and celery and onions and garlic in it as well. Um, also some salt went in there and some herbs, um, just to give it some flavor. I like my stock to have um, vegetables and herbs and stuff cooked right into it. I know sometimes people just do meat um, and bones, or I don't know the difference really between broth and stock. I looked it up once, but it's like one is made with the bones, one's just made with meat, I don't know. 
So I always make mine bone broth. Um, and I usually cook a meaty piece of meat with it though and cook it until the meat's kind of falling off and then take all the meat out and then cook the bones down longer in the broth. And there's lots of good videos out there on making um, stock or broth. I did not film doing that, but um, there's a ton of videos online on how to make good um, stock or bone broth. So um, when you do make yours, you just want to make sure that there's not anything in it that can't be canned. So you don't want any thickeners or flours or starches or anything like that in there. Um, but the carrots and the onions and the celery, all those pieces get um, strained out and it is totally safe for canning. So in just a moment, we'll get a ladle and I'll get um, my strainer that fits sort of in my funnel and we will start to fill these with some broth. All right guys, I'm gonna try and do this on camera here. Here's my broth and it does have a little fat on top and as you can see there's still stuff in there because in the bottom the veggies and uh, bones are still down there because I have not strained them off yet. I'm going to pour it through my little strainer here and right down into the funnel. It might take a little bit longer but it'll be really a lot easier for me in the long run to strain this out because this is a very big pot and my kitchen is quite small and uh, the shredded up chicken was actually in my biggest bowl, so I will just continue filling that until there's one inch headspace and I'll bring you guys back um, when it is there. I also wanted to show you guys that I did put a little bit more chicken in every jar. I had quite a bit left over um, and I have just enough little bits of vegetables and meat now just to make a small pot of soup just for myself to eat. And um, so I just divided up a little bit more chicken into every jar. It'll just be nice and meaty soup. So when I have the jars filled to one inch headspace with broth, I'll bring you guys back and show you what it looks like. All right, there's the jars ready to go. Um, I'm going to wipe the rims, put the lids and rings on, um, get the canner ready with the appropriate amount of water in it for my canner. Um, you guys need to read the instructions on your canner to find out how much water you need in yours. Um, these, like I said, will process for 90 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure for my elevation. I have debubbled them all with my handy plastic chopstick. Um, the only thing I think I am going to add to these, because I tasted the broth and it is not very salty. I put a little salt in it when I was cooking it, but not much. Um, I will probably add a little salt and a little pepper. Um, to each one of these jars and then upon opening if they need further seasoning you can do that then um, If you're if you like things with a very low sodium, you can pretty much leave salt out completely when you're pressure canning you do not need it so um, I Like these to kind of just be ready to go right out of the jar So I am going to add a little bit of salt and just like a touch of pepper in each jar and when I have the canner up on this stove and uh, the jars in there, I'll bring you guys back I'm probably not going to show wiping the rims. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. I put a little bit of white vinegar because there's meat in here and a little bit of grease from the broth. So I will put a little white vinegar on either a paper towel or disposable napkin, um, wipe the rims off, put a clean, washed, brand new lid on each jar and a ring, uh, fingertip tight. Um, I do know that some people put that, sometimes they think that that's pretty loose. Um, you don't want to wrench them down super hard, but you also don't want your rings on loose either. They'll have a lot more siphoning and um, a lot more stuff has opportunity to get up under the uh, seal if they are too loose as well. So uh, I don't even really like the term fingertip tight, but um, I just turn them around till I meet a good amount of resistance, but then don't go any farther. So once I have them all ready and in the canner, I'll give you guys a peek before I put the lid on. All right, there's a peek at the jars inside the pressure canner. Um, I have it over medium heat right now. And I will um, let this get pretty warm. Probably leave it like this for at least 15 minutes or so. 
um, and then I may come and turn it up to like medium high so we can really get it going and get it venting. It's going to vent for 10 minutes out of that little spigot right there before you put your um, lid on your pressure canner. You're going to want to check that. Make sure that it's not obstructed at all. Um, and then I have a dial on mine, but then I also bought the weighted gauge. I prefer that. So I'm going to put the 10 pound weight on that little spigot after it vents for 10 minutes. I'll bring it up to pressure and then I will start the timer. Okay guys, the lid is has been on and it has been venting. I don't know if you can see that very well, but a stream of steam uh, for 10 minutes. So we're going to put the 10 pound weight on. Uh, the Presto weights come with a base that's five pounds and then two of these rings that are five pounds each. So it has one ring on plus the base, so that is 10 pounds. Go right on there. Make sure that it's on there nice and loose. That'll start rocking back and forth when it's uh, up to pressure. Um, I'll bring you guys back when it's up to pressure. Um, like I said, pressure for my elevation is 10 pounds. Uh, you need to check your elevation to find out how much pressure that you need for your recipe. Once this comes up to pressure and that starts rocking, we are going to set the timer for 90 minutes. After the 90 minutes are up, we'll turn the stove off, let it come down from pressure on its own, um, and then when it finally reaches zero on here, um, it'll be unlocked and you can open the top away from yourself, be careful, and you can take the jars out. Also, there is the um, rest of the vegetables and meat and some broth from the big pot there um, boiling away. I'm going to turn that down to a simmer, let the veggies cook, and then I'm going to add these little itty bitty letter noodles. They're super cute. Um, they're from the Hispanic aisle in the grocery store and they're super duper cheap. They're like between 20, 25 and 33 cents a package. So if you guys ever see them, uh, pick them up. Your kids, especially if you have kids, they'll love them. So I'm going to throw those in there. That'll be dinner for me tonight. And uh, we'll I'll also have seven uh, quarts of chicken soup made for later this winter. So when that comes up to pressure and it's jiggling, I'll bring you guys back. The rocker is going. I will start to turn this down little by little just to keep it at a gentle rock. It's very hard to see that because the way the light is in the kitchen, but it is just above 10 pounds of pressure, which is exactly where you want it. Uh, my timer back there says one hour and 29 minutes. That's when it will be done. When that timer beeps, I will just shut the burner off and just leave this alone. Um, my canner usually takes about a half hour, 45 minutes to come down from pressure, which uh, thankfully will be um, right around when I need to get ready for work. So I'll take the jars out and they'll sit on the counter while I go work. So um, I'll try and bring you guys back when I take these out of the canner uh, if I get a chance. Just showing you a peek at my dinner I'm about to eat. It's the alphabet chicken soup. So when I go to make one of those jars, I can add a little bit more broth and some of these noodles and I'll have the same thing seven times in a row. Okay guys, the timer has gone off. I've turned the burner off back there. Um, now this is just going to slowly, slowly, slowly come down from temperature. As you can see, the little thing's still rocking. It'll probably do that for another few minutes as it cools down. And this will take about half hour, 45 minutes to come down from pressure. And uh, once it does that, I will be um, removing the jars and putting them on the counter to cool. Um, I think this is going to be the end of this video. Like I said, I'm doing this right before getting ready for work. If I have time, I might do a little shot um, of the jars once they're out of the canner. Um, I hope this video, guys, video helps you guys. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. Sorry, it's kind of thrown together. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.